Hey. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. Ah, so it's been a minute. Um, like a year? Over a year? Wait. I probably should have looked at this before I started, but I did not. I'm trying to see when, like, the last video that I made, when I thought I was coming back. Oh, yeah. September of 2017. Okay, so. Over a year. So, I know y'all are like, this girl, again. But, stuff is way different than it was in the last video. Like, I don't even know if you can just tell my demeanor. Obviously, I'm not as down as I was at the time. Um... So basically, I made the last video thinking I was like good, ready to come back, you know. So I said, now you said I was gonna start back working, start back doing stuff. I actually, so I was pretty bad in that video, and then I actually got worse, like physical health um, got worse, which made my mental health get worse. And um, so yeah, that's pretty much what happened. Like right after I made that video, I got super duper more super duper more sick i got way more sicker than i was sicker it sounds wrong but anyway you get the point um and then 2018 honestly like almost just took me out I'm not even exaggerating um i'll try to give y'all a quick recap of my 2018 okay so i had surgery um last february i had a breast reduction done i so, when I got sick, I gained, like, man, like, 60 pounds, right? I gained all this weight, which they still can't tell me why it happened, but clearly that's not normal. And it wasn't 60 pounds over a large amount of time. It was 60 pounds in, like, a two-month period. It just came out of nowhere. And I've been the same weight since I was 15. And I'm 37 now. So, anyway. Um, see? Talking extra now. I forgot what I was doing. Oh, okay, yeah. So, I gained all this weight. If you know me in real life, then you know that I was blessed up top. I mean, I've had, they weren't out of control, but for my frame, because I was so slim. And then it's just like, bam. And so once I got sick and I gained all this weight, then it got even worse. And I was up to like a, the last bra that I was willing to buy in that size, because I was like, I'm not going up anymore. The last one I bought was a, like a 40 triple D, I think it was, or something like that. I don't know, but that damn bra cost me like 85 bucks and I could fit my whole head in there. Like that's how much, you know, I had. So I got a breast reduction done um, through the VA and I do, I want to make a video about that, another one at some point now that I'm back to doing this stuff. But yeah, so I had breast reduction in February and that recovery was a beast. Um, my mom actually came out here to help me for like a month. Man, that was the best thing ever. <laughs> like, I guess no matter how old you get, you know, um, like mom makes everything better. So she came for that month. So yeah, that was February, March, April. Like all those months were pretty much recovery because you're not allowed to do a lot of stuff. So I wasn't doing a whole bunch um, then. Well, other than still trying to get seen for other stuff, still trying to find out what's wrong with me because, oh, okay. So last video, I think I said it that I was told that I had Lyme disease that's what I was given my diagnosis after that video the last video I was told actually oh yeah no that's not what's wrong with you at all that's not what you had so I basically wasted a year getting treated taking medications doing all this stuff for Lyme disease and then to be told that I don't have it so whatever anyway um what else happened to me last year well, you guys know I lost my job. Like I said, my health got worse. Then I had the breast reduction, which was like a bright spot, <laughs> honestly, because it was killing me. My back and my neck, which I have issues because of a car accident. Um, so the boobs just made it worse. Um, I don't remember what else happened. That's bad, a whole year. There was a lot of stuff. I think it was so much I started blocking stuff out. Oh, okay. So speaking of blocking stuff out. Um... At some point, I'll make another video about this too, but I was sexually abused for a lot of my childhood, like a lot of it, 
honestly probably mo most of it now that I think about it um and so I didn't deal with that like never I left home pushed it to the I think I just you know well maybe you don't know but at some point when you keep going through stuff I think you just keep pushing it to the back and pushing to the back for so long that you you kind of forget about it like you know it's there but you don't deal with it it's just that thing that's in the back of your mind but you can only do that for so long I've learned the hard way um yeah if you have something like that you can only do it for so long where you just push this thing to the back and you kind of ignore it. it's like when you were a kid right and you had your your bedroom closet and your mom tells you to clean your room and so what you do is clean up the room but then throw everything in the closet so then you get to the point where it's like if you open the door you just throw stuff in there and close it because if you open it all the way everything's gonna fall out so think of it that way basically it's like my brain was the closet and all the stuff that was happening to me I just kept putting it in there and putting it in there and just closing the door on it well eventually it all spilled out I mean now I know that it was manifesting itself in other ways and like relationships and how I dealt with people and how I felt about certain scenarios and being around guys and a bunch of other stuff now I know that that's all tied to that but you know at the time it's just I thought that's just how I was um but anyway after a lot of issues being caused by said situations basically I got to a really bad place and I was like I got to do something about this because I'm tired of feeling like this um I was just mad and like miserable and upset and so many other feelings so you have that which is a beast in itself to deal with right then you have my physical issues my health was getting worse my hands as y'all can see still shake all the time there's st i still don't know what this is about side note i had an appointment in december and this fool told me neurologist comes in easily 60 65 years old right um he talked to me for maybe like five minutes this is the va don't get me started on that. He comes in and says, well, your hands aren't shaking that bad today. So there's really not much I would do for you as far as a treatment plan goes. Um, You're 65, sir. Your hands aren't shaking at all. Like, can we talk about why mine shake at all? You're saying they don't shake that bad. I left. I walked out of the appointment. But anyway, see now I, I keep letting this stuff distract me. <laughs> Okay, I think I was talking about like therapy and all that stuff. So yeah, got tired of being angry, got tired of being upset, decided to do something about it, started going to therapy. So I was dealing with that, dealing with my health getting worse, dealing with my hands getting worse, um, recovering from surgery. So that puts me at like the summer of last year, maybe. Um, yeah, that was pretty much, that's not pretty much it, but that was a lot. Having all these appointments back and forth. Oh, and then disability. So that's the other thing. I applied for um, social security disability because my hands, like sometimes they don't work. They're just completely dead sometimes. I can't feel anything. And so I applied for social security disability. Like when I first started physically having problems, almost two years ago at this point. Um, yeah, it was the end of 2016. Oh, that's over two years. Okay. But yeah, so I applied for that. I got denied did an appeal, got denied again. I was told that this is the regular process of how that goes. They always deny everybody. And then, so the next step is to have a hearing. And you have to wait like a year and a half or two years to get the hearing. And I got my letter actually like a week ago saying that my hearing is scheduled for June. So I get to, basically I go to this hearing in front of a judge. They look over all my records, look over everything. I, maybe i make a statement i don't know how it goes and then they decide um if i am disabled like i can't work anymore um then they'll grant it to me and then if not then i might have to start selling uh uh <laughs> something other than these t-shirts <laughs> um so yeah that's that so dealing with that stuff health mental health Physical symptoms, disability, going to all these appointments. And then, okay, so that puts me in August. So my brother, 
Um, in 2008, my brother passed away and that was really hard for me to deal with another video for another time. It's still hard, but I was in a bad spot back then. Like anyway, so that happened. Um, August, my cousin, and I do the air quotes because I want y'all to understand the relationship between me and him. I will say my brother, like if I describe him to people who don't know me, I'll just say my brother passed away in August, but he's really my cousin by, you know, like that's our actual title, but me and him are like siblings. Um, so yeah, he was actually murdered in August and I was going to say, oh, he passed away. Like, no, passed away sounds nice. Like, oh, he passed in his sleep or he whatever. He was murdered. Basically the story we, the family has been told is that, um, he was with a guy, they were in this dude's truck, dude's playing around. Well, yeah, they're in the dude's truck. My cousin gets out to go like use the bathroom. He goes somewhere off in the woods. It's in Houston, so anyway. Comes back, he's standing at the car and the dude's like, has a gun, but it's Texas. And he's pointing in it, he's like pulling the trigger, you know? Oh, the trigger is not right here. <laughs> he's pulling the trigger and it keeps clicking because supposedly it's empty. And then they, we were told that my cousin was like, man, you know, stop playing, like chill out, stop. And the guy kept doing it, kept doing it. And then the gun went off, shot my cousin in the head, dude takes off in his truck and then nothing. So by the time, excuse me, we found out about it. We knew that my cousin had been shot in the head, but we didn't know where he was. We didn't know if he was dead, if he was alive. And then anyway, like two days later, they end up finding the dude um, and then he takes him to where my cousin was. He dumped him off in the field, like some trash. <sighs> like, I can't even talk about this without getting, I get really sad that he was taken away like that. And then I get really mad at that guy. So that guy's like 50 years old. You're 50 years old and you live in Texas. You know damn well how to handle a gun. He was like, oh, I thought it was empty. I was just playing around. Yeah, okay. So anyway, whatever. So all my previous stuff I mentioned, <laughs> add to that my cousin getting murdered. And like I said, my other my brother, my other brother got um killed in two thousand eight. Well he didn't get killed, sorry. He passed away. That was natural. Um Dang, I totally forgot the point I was about to make. Oh, okay, yeah. So when he died, it was hard. I was upset. I struggled to deal with it. But when I saw him, because I know I was in denial, I'm sure everybody does that. Like the whole plane ride from here, San Diego to Texas, I was like crying and upset. But then I'm like, no, maybe it's not him. Like maybe they picked up somebody's wallet. They thought it was his. That's not my brother. It was up until I saw him in the casket that it was like, okay, that's it. He's really not coming back. Like this is my brother right here. My cousin, though we didn't get that like we didn't even get to see him and the casket it was a closed casket funeral because like i said the dude shot him in the head so no lie i'm sitting in the funeral like looking around and because they had the you know the pictures at the front like the big posters and pictures of my cousin and stuff and then a closed casket the flowers on top of everything and we're sitting there and i'm like they don't even know that might not even be him like and I'm looking at my aunt, which is his mom, um, because they said that they had to identify him through, I think his dental records or fingerprints, one of the two, because his face, you know. And then the dude left him in the field. And like I said, this is in Houston, so humid, hot. Um, I guess he wasn't, like his face wasn't good because my aunt wanted to see him and they told her they probably, they didn't recommend it. Um, but at the funeral, I'm like, we don't even know if that's him in there. Like, what if? The funeral home just put like some rocks in there to make the thing make the casket feel heavy that guy they found he might maybe he didn't have id maybe they maybe he knew my cousin and he was wearing something of his or whatever i don't know it's just all these things because i i didn't see him physically in there so in my mind it's like this is a mistake he's gonna show up like he's okay and all I was thinking was like, man, I wish I could see his hands at least. I know it was closed casket for obvious reasons, but I know what his hands look like. 
So I was like, I wish I could just, they could let me see his hands. Cause I just couldn't believe that he was dead. Even through the funeral, people are getting up there making their statements. I'm looking at the program. I mean, I did cry a lot because like I said, me and him are super close, but I still had this like, mm, maybe it's not him. And even now, so that was in August. I said, even now I'm still like, Man, that, that dude's going to pop up when I come home. Because every time I come home, my cousin didn't have a car, right? Every time he found out I was in Houston, he would show up at my mom's house. He called me and be like, hey, I heard you're here. And I'm like, yup. And then he just show up. So him popping up places is like how, how my family expects. Because that's, that's what he did. He would pop up at grandma, like auntie, whoever. He just popped up the biggest grin all the time. And so... When I go home now, every time I'm like looking for him to pop up, waiting for my phone, you know, I ring for him to be like, hey, I heard you in town. And so that's been a struggle. I mean, I made it through this without crying. So that's something. Uh, <laughs> that's a step in the right direction, I guess. But yeah, so that was August. And honestly, I think that was kind of what pushed me over the edge of just being like, I am so cool with not being here anymore. Like, I am so okay with not waking up. I really, really was just like, I can't do this anymore, man. I mean, you take one brother away from me already. Now you take another one away from me. And then the way that he went out, it's just, I was mad and I was just done. I was in a, I was in a bad spot. And then my, like I said, my health was bad. I wasn't getting any answers from these doctors. Um, you know, I had lost my job, so that's a financial strain, just dealing with that and then trying to always, or not trying, but always having to worry about, can I cover my bills? Is this going to get turned off? Is this going to get whatever? And I was over it, man. So that was August. Um, and then my, one of my really, really good friends had asked me months before, to go meet her for her birthday. She wanted to go to um, Greece. And so we got like tickets and did all that stuff way ahead of time. But by the time it came around in all honesty and Greece, I have to, I have to make a video one day about like manifesting and all that kind of stuff. Cause Greece has been on my list. So, okay. Every year I make a list um, of like goals for the next year. Right. At, every year in December I do this. And then I make a vision board to go with my list. But Greece has been on my list for years. And so then, but I didn't want to go just because of all the stuff that I had going on. I really didn't want to go the whole time I was texting my friends and I was just like, man, I really don't feel like even doing this. And everybody who knows me was like, it's Greece. What are you talking about? You want to go here forever? That's how, that's how bad I was that I just, I didn't even care about that trip. Saying I was going to Greece would be like going to LA. Like that's how I felt about it. And then I almost was just like, Man, forget it. Forget the ticket I already got. Forget this. Forget that. I just, I'm not going to go. And one of my friends was like, I think you need to go. Like, you need to get away and just be away from everything for a minute and get your mind together. No lie the entire way. Because I had to take a train from San Diego to LA because I was flying to LAX. The whole train ride, I was thinking about how much I didn't want to go. The whole ride to the airport. I don't want to go. I don't want to go the whole flight. When I tell you I got there and I stepped off that plane and I saw it, I was just like, man, I'm glad I didn't um, like miss this trip. And my friend Angie, the one who I went with, it was her birthday. Just we talked a lot because she she's in she's stationed in Italy. So that's why we met over there. But and she was just like, I think you needed to come here. This is a reset for you to kind of go back and just restart like it. Get yourself together, work on, you know, your business, work on your health, the parts you can control, just take care of you. And so I'm so happy I went on that trip because that's exactly what it was. And for as much as I didn't want to go there, man, I, I'm, I'm glad I don't have to be like, man, I wish I would have because it honestly did me so much good to go there. I think that's kind of when I started to get out of this hole that I was in, not fully, but that definitely was a step towards it. And so... That was September. Um, nothing really happened October, November. I went home for Christmas. 
because my nephews, I love them to pieces. And I wanted to see my family just because of what happened. You know, I wanted to be around them again. So I went home for Christmas. And yeah, that was kind of it. I mean, for December. Oh, and then while I was home, I, I decided, I'm like, man, I'm, I really miss working on my business. Listen, all these shirts. <laughs> I was like, I really miss it. And I haven't, I hadn't, well, y'all know I haven't been on here, but in two years, I hadn't touched my business, hadn't been off social media. I've been off all social media, personal business. Like, I haven't been on anything. And it was amazing. I'm almost scared to get back on now. So, because um, I was supposed to do this. <laughs> I said I was going to start April 1st, and hmm, let's see how that went. And then I kept saying today, I was like, oh, I'll do it this morning. Oh, I'll get on there tonight. And then just now, I was like, you know what? Stop being a jerk and just do it. And so, yeah, but I, um, again, sidetracked myself. You know, I don't remember what I was going to say. Oh, decided. I was like, yeah, I want to really start working on my business again. And so then... When I was thinking like, okay, when I get back home in January, I'm going back. I'm all in. Like, I'm really going to go hard for my business. And whatever happens this year happens. But I don't have to ever wor wor wonder or worry like, man, what if I would have tried? What if this? What if that? I'm putting everything into it this time. And then whatever is going to happen is going to happen. And so that night because like I said it's two years I hadn't I hadn't thought about it I hadn't worked on ideas I wasn't inspired by anything and I'm usually always the person that's taking notes writing stuff down but I just I didn't care my frame of mind was so bad and so that night because I didn't even sleep that night I stayed up the whole night and I had all these ideas and I'm like man I need to go get me a notebook um because I had one here in San Diego at my house but I was at in Texas at my mom's so I got up and oh, let me show you. I went, to, um, I went to Walmart. I waited until the sun came up. It was like 6 o'clock in the morning. Um, and then I got me a notebook. Right? And I bought a bunch of stickers and did all this stuff. That's kind of unnecessary. But <laughs> I started writing. So you see, I started when I started writing, all of this came out. I no lie sat there and wrote for like all these pages of stuff. Oh, there's more. I did this in probably... An hour these are all shirt ideas this all <laughs> these pages i filled in and i guess it was just like a faucet kind of you know i hadn't turned it on for two years and then as soon as i did it was just stuff flooding out so um yeah so i i made a conscious effort to start working on my business again conscious effort to keep going to therapy for um the sexual abuse stuff and then like for also i was seeing a therapist for people who have chronic illnesses whatever it's been helpful i shouldn't have said that um so i said i was going to do that work on losing this freaking 60 pounds that i gained that they don't know why yet hopefully it doesn't come back um and then yeah so that's pretty much been what i've been doing for the beginning of the year just kind of working on the back end stuff inventory um updating products like just trying to just getting back easing myself back into it and so i felt like i was ready to do this and explain to you guys where i've been again but to say that i am in a much better place you can see i mean just go back and look at the other video i probably won't remember to link it i don't even know if i know how i see people people always say that oh link will be in the description box but <laughs> whatever um but yeah you can see it i can feel it in myself a night and day difference i was so sad in that in the other video i was just down like defeated and i'm not like that anymore thankfully i'm in a better place um i've been taking my antidepressants because i even then i stopped doing that because i was like what do i need to take this for none of this matters i don't care about life blah 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 and so yeah i've been working out I've been taking my meds and working on my gratitude journal every day or I try to do it every day. And if I don't write it down, then I at least just mentally think about stuff that I'm grateful for. So I'm just in a better place. And so I wanted to make this to just say what up and I'm back officially in so many ways. There's so much stuff that I have that I want to show y'all and I want to do and um 
so yeah just thank you for rocking with me the people who have been i appreciate you even if i wasn't on social media or checking messages or whatever i'm going through all that stuff now so thank you for everybody who reached out like i appreciate it i'm sorry i wasn't in a place to really answer you but i was girl was i'm telling you 2017 or 2017 2018 like it was almost a wrap for real i, I didn't think i was gonna get through it but here i am so you guys will be seeing me a lot more and yeah i will talk to y'all later